Okay, so normally I try not to rant about anything that could be considered political or touchy or anything else like that. But one thing I have been noticing a lot, especially on Facebook, is the whole um, Supreme Court decision to let Hobby Lobby state that um, they can opt out of not uh, not allowing their insurance companies that they choose to provide um, post conception um, birth control medications. Now, a lot of the things that I've been seeing are pretty much calling Hobby Lobby a bunch of woman haters or that they are against women's rights. The whole shebang, like the whole whichever side of the spectrum it is, is just pointing fingers and just pretty much smearing Hobby Lobby and the family behind it, the Greens, that they're a bunch of woman haters. I just want to know how that qualifies them to be woman haters when they're pretty much stating that they're okay with preconception, um, yeah, preconception birth control medications, but the medications that have the possibility to lead the lead to abortion, they do not want because it goes against their religious beliefs, all of a sudden they're getting lambasted just because it knocks off four medications that they're required to provide. Now, I'm not going to get into the whole thing of whether or not I'm pro-life or pro-choice. That really is not the focus I'm trying to bring to this. What I'm trying to wrap my head around is why a company is considered to be a bunch of woman haters when they're exercising their First Amendment right based on their religious um, practices that pretty much states that abortion is murder based on quite a few um, verses in, their, in what they call the Bible that pretty much talk about one some person being made inside of the womb by God. I mean, and it's not just like three or four different verses. I've actually looked into it. We're talking 30, 40, 50 plus verses that pretty much all talk about being formed by God in the womb. And this is all on their pretty much religious freedom um, aspects. This is all part of their Christian beliefs. But even though they're pretty much saying, we don't want anything to do with the abortion process, they're pretty much getting lambasted because they don't want to provide abortion methods. Now, going throughout all of the whole thing, Wade versus Roe, etc., etc., one thing I have noticed that's pretty much all the way through is that it is solely up to the woman whether or not the abortion happens. And in the extreme, and this has happened, if a boy and a girl have sex, a girl ends up pregnant. The father is willing to man up, take responsibility for that child, and provide for it as much as it can, as much as he can. Yet, even though the father is willing to take responsibility, even if the woman does not want it, the mother just does not want it at all, the mother, regardless of what the father wants, pretty much has the right to go ahead and get the abortion without without considering the fact that the father who helped in the creation of this child I mean it takes a sperm and an egg coming together to create the child now last I checked that's equal parts and responsibility yet 
because of how Wade versus Roe panned out throughout the years, it's the woman's choice only. If it's the woman's choice only, then why are we the taxpayers under all this whole new reform thing, thanks to Obamacare, which I'm not going to get into my opinions on that one either, thanks to Obamacare, um, most corporations, um, with the exception of Hobby Lobby and other Christian-owned, Christian-owned, family-owned businesses, are all pretty much being forced to pay for methods of abortion via, like, the week after pill or the morning after pill. So if it's solely the choice of the woman, if it's just the right of the woman to get the abortion, why is she not liable to pay for it out of her own pocket? If she, like my, my thought process is, if she wants to have the abortion because she does not want the child, she doesn't have to have anybody's consent whatsoever, even if the father wants to have the chi child, take custody of it, take custody of it, raise it so that way the child has a life. All of that. And the woman just does not want to have the child at all. She can just forego everything and have the abortion. And with some of the reforms under Obamacare, it also comes down to where, in some circumstances, the taxpayer's dime is paying for the abortion. My thought process is twofold on this one. As I already stated, if the woman wants to go through with this, why is it the responsibility of everybody else to pay for it except for the woman? And number two, if the woman did not want to have a child in the first place, then why did she either A, have sex, or B, not use preconception birth control? I mean, condoms are a heck of a lot cheaper than a abortion. Yes, I understand that sometimes condoms fail. I understand sometimes the preconception stuff that you buy over the counter doesn't work. But then again at the same time, if the woman is not wanting child and children in the first place, then why isn't she taking necessary precautions on her own to get on birth control medication so that way if she wants to have sex all she wants, she doesn't have to worry about getting pregnant so long as she sticks with the daily routine of taking the morning, um, pretty much taking those preconception birth control pills. Now, I know I'm probably going to see this in the comment views along the lines of, well, people can forget to take their medications, etc., etc., etc. Well, as a diabetic and some and someone with behavioral issues as well, I I'm pretty much in a routine of taking pills before, pretty much before I go to sleep and after I wake up. Yes, I can understand that sometimes you forget. However, if it starts to become a routine where you t keep up with it just day after day after day, you don't forget. It pretty much becomes a habit of, uh, uh, time to take the pills. It becomes a reflex. And reflexes pretty much just happen without thinking. You just, like with me, I wake up, reach for the pill bottles that I need, pour out the necessary medicines, and I take them. So, for me, the whole, oh, sometimes they forget thing, pretty much makes me think that it's not that they're forgetting, it's that they're refusing to make a routine out of taking the medications. 
refusing to make a routine out of taking the birth control pills. These, the pills that would pretty much prevent the pregnancy in the first place. And then, if the thing should, ha if a child should be conceived, even though it's proven that she's on the birth control pills, then it should be the fault of the doctor who pres prescribed the medication because it did not do what it was supposed to do. It should not fall under the taxpayer's um, dime. It should not happen under anyone else's dime. It should pretty much fall to the woman who wants the abortion. Or, if there were, if there was a child, despite being on the proper birth control medication, then it would fall to the fault of the doctor who prescribed it for just not making sure everything was correct. I mean, those are just my thoughts. I'm not trying to be a chauvinist or anything else like that. I'm just trying to wrap my head around why taxpayers are pretty much forced to, in the, term, in the phrase of paying taxes, pay for the abortion operations. And then also on top of that, if it's solely the choice of the woman, why is she not required to take responsibility for the abortion payments? I mean, I don't think I'm wrong in thinking that way. I mean, that's just using proper common sense, a train of thought that actually does make sense. I mean, if I needed to have my kidney removed, it would be up to me to pay for whatever the insurance, pay for whatever if it's not if it's not required. I mean, if I want to get LASIK eye surgery to get rid of these things, it would be out of my pocket to pay for the LASIK eye surgery, not the taxpayers. And there are times where I have serious pains going through, um, just seeing through the glasses, etc., etc. I also have a slight walleye, so that just contributes to the fact that sometimes I don't always focus and it gives me a minor headache. But at the same time, I also take precautions to try to avoid all of the headaches and all of the issues. I take the precautions. I clean my lenses. I make sure my eyes are clear of all gunk and dust and debris, etc. I even go so far as to sometimes pretty much pour cool water over my eyes just to make sure they're getting enough moisture. And I know because I brought up the whole pain thing that I'm pretty much going to get in the comments also that, oh, you don't know what it's like to give birth to a child. You don't know what it's, or you, don't, you can't imagine how much pain you go, the woman goes through. Well, there have been some tests proven that getting kicked in the ball sack creates more pain than giving actual birth. And I've lost count of how many times I've been kicked in the nuts. So if getting kicked in the nuts generates more pain than giving birth, then I can say that I have a general idea of the amount of pain, but because it's a completely different type of pain, I can't say I've experienced it. Now, I've also seen the video where the two guys pretty much get electrodes pretty much put onto all the areas of the stomach to simulate pain while a woman is giving birth. And judging by the looks on their eyes, yeah, I could tell that they went through a lot of pain for that. But at the same time, if it just, if the right to an abortion falls solely on the mother or the mother to be, depending on your outlook on when a child is a child, then why isn't, 
why isn't the sole responsibility of payment for this operation up to the woman herself? I mean, it sh if, because she's pretty much doing this out of her own not out of her own not wanting to give birth to the child that would fall under the technical classification of cosmetic surgery it would pretty much be along the lines of me wanting to get a nose job it's not medically necessary I just want a different nose and it would be up to me to pay out however much the rhinoplasty would cost and then the insurance would not cover anything because it's cosmetic and it's of my own free will. And last I checked, an abortion was of the free will of the mother carrying it. Now, I can understand medical issues. If there are medical complications that require an abortion, I'm not getting into that one. That one is pretty much a gray area. I'm still trying to decide on my, on that one. I'm purely talking about abortions that have no medical background whatsoever. It's just that the mother who's carrying the child just doesn't outright want it. Why should the taxpayers, or why should anyone, or why should also insurances cover something like that, even if it's in the form of a pill? Now, I understand that some, some people will say that a life doesn't happen until after birth, while others will say it happens as the fetus um, pretty much develops as soon as I think it's like three days when the baby, when the fetus starts getting some form of personal identification. So my my thing is though, why should other people? be responsible for post-conception when every preconception method should have been utilized before wanting the post-conception I mean if you can if you guys can explain that to me rationally I'd love to like hear, I'd love to read the opinions try to figure out and try to figure out why the taxpayers and insurance companies are being forced to pay for post um, post conception um, birth control pills, which in some religions and some beliefs believe that leads to the abortion, which is considered murder. I'm just stating what the beliefs are. I'm not giving my own personal things. I just want to know why it's such a big deal that uh, that a business owner whose family runs the business, whose family pretty much has all of the say in the business, is pretty much getting ridiculed for standing up for his beliefs where if a, if a company that was owned by a Scientologist family were to say, hey, we don't want our insurance companies to cover um, antidepressants because it goes against our beliefs, it probably would just flicker and then disappear, no problem. It just seems to me that because it's, it's a Christian owner, that that's another reason why all the hate is directed towards him. I mean, the Green family behind Hobby Lobby has actually financially backed my graduating college to an extent. And I have heard him say in one of his speeches that he has no issues with preconception birth control if the, if they want if people are wanting to have sex and they're taking the time to at least make sure it doesn't happen before 
they have sex, he's okay with that. He's perfectly okay with that. His issues are the post-conceptions, post-conception birth controls, which can lead to a, um, can lead to an, a very early stage abortion. And his beliefs is that because of those verses, those 50 plus verses that pretty much talk about um, God forming some, um, a child within the womb, that it leads to murder, which just is not okay with him. Now, I've also done a lot of the research about all the different ones that are included, and out of the 20 insurance-backed medications, because because Mr. Green does not want the um, post-conception ones, and the Supreme Court ruled in his favor on that one because of his religious beliefs, the list dropped down to 16. That's only four medications that were considered post-conception that he did not want to pay for, to pay the insurance company to pay for because of his rig religious beliefs. Because as a Christian, he believes that um, after conception, it's pretty much murder. So I'm just trying to understand why people are getting upset when he's just exercising a religious freedom to not pay for post-contraception um, birth control medicines that he, that he thinks goes against his religion.